In this video lecture, we will cover the four different classes of macromolecules that are found in the human body. In fact, all living organisms have these same four classes of macromolecules. These macromolecules are built from simple subunits and they have a variety of functions. Some of them, such as proteins, fold up into certain shapes that allow them to carry out certain functions. When you really boil it down, macromolecules are easy to understand. These are formed when you take small, simpler molecules and connect them together in a repeating chain. Each simple subunit is like a part of a railroad track, while talking about the macromolecule as a whole is like talking about the whole railroad line. Another way to think about it is to think about a whole class of students holding hands. Each student would be a simple subunit, and the whole chain of, of people holding hands is the macromolecule. There are four main types of macromolecules. These are carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. We will cover the structure and function of each of these in this order. First, however, let's look at something common to all macromolecules. They are not built up atom by atom. Rather, separate pre-made subunits come together and are connected in what is known as a dehydration reaction. This is also sometimes referred to as dehydration synthesis. Certain parts of these subunit molecules, usually parts containing polarized bonds, can interact with each other and form new bonds linking the two subunits. The reverse reaction is also possible. This splitting of a macromolecule into two pieces is known as hydrolysis. The same point where the macromolecule is formed is usually where it is split. Carbohydrates are the first macromolecule we will look at. The subunit or monomer of a carbohydrate is a simple sugar. This simple sugar is also sometimes known as a monosaccharide. These pentagon or hexagon shaped molecules can be connected to each other through their oxygen atoms and they can form long chains. Examples of these chains include cellulose which makes up most trees and paper and starch which is also found in many plants and stores energy. Whether you are talking about a simple sugar or a long starch chain all carbohydrates have the same general chemical formula. They are made of molecules of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen at a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. That is, the number of hydrogens is always double the number of oxygens or carbons. One way to remember this is to think of the formula of water, H2O. Carbohydrates are just what they sound like, carbon hydrated with the water, or CH2O. Carbohydrates can have complex structures due both to the diversity of sugars that they can link together and the ways that these sugars can be linked. We normally think about carbohydrates in terms of our diet where they provide a source for short or long term energy. In contrast to the length of some carbohydrates which can be thousands of simple sugar units linked together Lipids, another class of macromolecules, usually only feature one or two fatty acids connected, sometimes three. These fatty acids are linked together into a lipid or triglyceride. Fatty acids can store even more energy than carbohydrates can. These molecules contain many carbon-hydrogen bonds, which are rich in potential chemical energy. Lipids also play important roles in the cell, helping to form membranes, and these membranes help separate different parts of the cell or help separate the cell from the outside environment.
These lipid membranes are formed from a special type of lipid, known as a phospholipid. Phospholipids, like the one shown here, have both a nonpolar hydrocarbon chain, shown in gray, and a polar group that can interact with water. Due to the hydrophobic effect, phospholipid molecules will orient themselves so as to shield the nonpolar water-fearing fatty acid portion from the water. This orientation forms phospholipid bilayers and act to separate the water into two compartments. Our cells use this structure to form a barrier between the outside and the inside of the cell. The next class of macromolecules are nucleic acids. These polymers are built as a chain of repeating nucleotide bases. These bases come in four different flavors or types, and the sequence in which they appear encodes genetic information. The nucleotide monomers that make up a nucle nucleic acid chain all have a phosphate group and a sugar component. The four different types, adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine differ in the nitrogenous base they have. Even though they're all connected in the same way through the phosphate and sugar backbone, and even though there are only four different types, nucleic acids can be complex due to the length of the chains and the unique sequence of bases that some of them have. The linkages made between individual bases are not influenced by which base is present, since the phosphate and sugar groups are the same on all of them. The sequence of bases found in nucleic acid encodes information, just like this barcode with its sequence of black and white stripes can encode information about a product. What information do nucleic acids encode? Well, they serve as your genetic material which is passed down from generation to generation and in short the information inside them represents recipes for making certain proteins which happens to be the fourth class of macromolecules. Proteins are chains of different amino acids put together. So in this case the protein is the polymer and the amino acid is the monomer. Similar to the nucleotides of nucleic acids, the amino acids come in different flavors or types but are connected to each other in the same way. There are 20 different naturally occurring amino acids that are used when building a protein. Proteins are very important to human biology, serving structural roles as well as acting as enzymes. Let's take a moment to review how subunits are joined using amino acids as an example. Here, at the top, two amino acids are shown. The white circled R group will be different for different types of amino acids. Dehydration synthesis can join two amino acids regardless of which of the different 20 types they are. This synthesis reaction can be repeated to make proteins that are hundreds of amino acids long. The 20 different amino acids that make the protein alphabet have a variety of different chemical characteristics. Most importantly, some are polar while others are nonpolar. The exact sequence of amino acids that are found in a protein structure influence how, influences how that protein will behave. A straight reading of the protein sequence from beginning of the protein to the end is known as the primary structure of the protein. This is a little bit like looking at amino acids as if they were beads on a string. In the cell, however, these beads will clump together and cause the protein to fold into a particular three-dimensional shape. This shape is known as the tertiary structure. The 3D shape or structure of the protein reflects its function. 
the sequence of amino acids somehow directs proteins to fold into certain shapes. Scientists are still trying to work out a better way to determine how a primary sequence leads to a three-dimensional fold. This is not an easy thing to do because many interactions and forces influence this folding process. These forces include hydrogen bonds between different parts of the protein as well as ionic bonds between different side groups of the protein. Probably the most important, however, is the hydrophobic exclusion effect. Proteins fold in a way as to shield the nonpolar amino acids in their sequence away from the water. Heat and other stresses can disrupt or disturb these interactions, leading to the protein leading the protein to denature and lose its folded shape. Since structure is important for function, denaturation usually makes a protein inactive. There is an interesting relationship between nucleic acids and proteins in your cells. The genetic information in nucleic acids in other words, the sequence of nucleotide bases, is what directs the synthesis of proteins with a particular amino acid sequence. This, in turn, influences what folded protein shapes you will see in the cell, and influences what functions the protein will have. The relationship is known as the central dogma of molecular biology, and it is similar in some ways to how the sequence of notes in sheet music indirectly controls the sound that is heard during a perform performance.